they all good day i welcome you uh, all my uh, followers and uh, newcomers who have been sending me lots of uh, messages on my whatsapp group as well as uh, there have been uh, many queries which have come across by which of which my followers and my comrades are asking me therefore after uh, completing the series of uh, for the safe anchoring procedures it has basically you know encouraged me based upon your especially my uh, you know followers my students my comrades uh inquisitiveness and uh, they wanted to know more about the subject matter which has encouraged me to broadcast this particular lecture and the series here on from now onwards with respect to lecture number 49 and the subject matter is importance of hydrodynamics in the ship handling this is part 1 i will be taking this up gradually based upon what all things i have jotted down to facilitate you and moreover i can understand the apprehensions why many of our mariners want to know because today what is happening uh, when we talk about the ship handling it certainly has been a cause of concern for many uh, seafarers and uh, that was the reason also i was you know few months back invited upon uh, by the respected cmmi on their platform to talk about this and at that point in time also i had approximately 100 odd attendees uh, when we conducted or when the cmmi conducted this webinar so i will be uh, you know uh, uh raising the level of uh, this particular lecture uh based upon what i've jotted down however i would ask you and request you in case you would like to know further more than that what i've jotted down do let me know i will try to incorporate the same thing accordingly thank you in advance and please do like subscribe and share my youtube channel under the banner of marine quest solutions thank you in advance so the subject matter is importance of hydrodynamics in ship handling part 1 now i'll read out this and try to explain you all first and foremost what i've written here is what is the importance and the relevance of the practical knowledge and the practical seamanship in cognizance of hydrodynamics with respect to ship handling there are lots of schools of thoughts now as we speak as our old school teaching goes by virtue of which uh, i think i have already narrated uh, this particular thing many a times or umpteen number of times that as our old school teaching goes deep down in our roots and how we have been taught brain is the best com computer which has so far and by and large invented so many computers and super computer computers respectively and our eyes being the best radars with the proper coordination and having uh, been on top of uh, top as far as the situational awareness is concerned now when i made this statement what i'm trying to say is that of course i do not undermine the electronic aids to navigation but all i'm trying to say is that in you know uh, when we complement the uh, electronic aids with respect to our practical knowledge of seamanship it really creates magic uh, you know miraculously and basically facilitates the mariner makes him much more comfortable on the bridge especially you know in the during the critical passages or uh, you know uh, whenever he's uh, in a kind of a dire straits now how i was stating about fact does not undermine the importance and or the and or reduces the rel uh, the relevance towards the aids to navigation but in order to optimize the usage it has to be harmonized with the knowledge of practical knowledge as 
well as paying heeds in particular or to importance of the vessel's maneuvering characteristics with the present scenario of number of incidents accidents being on rise as well as taking toll with an ominous global visibility now when i make this statement what i'm trying to say is that today even when we have the state of the art equipment on the bridge still we come across so many catastrophical scenarios by virtue of which beat the master with due respect i am also a master and or the senior officers or the junior officers they had been found some so much ignorant when i did so many incident investigations that it has been like you know a uh, horrendously surprising to me that how could this kind of lapse could take place nevertheless we will see the figures as we go down the slides therefore it has since then made uh, made uh, all the more imperative to have a proper understanding of the or on the subject matter basically as far as the practical knowledge of the seamanship is concerned you know i've been doing lots of uh, navigational mentoring for lots of uh, few companies not lots but few companies when i ask them like you know uh, going back to the basics the rule number 5 like every vessel shall at all time maintain a proper lookout by sight hearing as well as by all available means appropriate to the prevailing circumstances so as to uh, uh, make a full appraisal of situation and the risk of collision it came to my you know the worst uh, nightmare when i asked even the senior officers that what would be your primary means of lookout and the answer i got was egg desk now where are your eyes because the rule number 5 says whenever you see a vessel in sight every vessel shall at all time maintain a proper lookout by sight hearing as well as by all available means so <coughs> your primary means of lookout is sight hearing and therefore all available means you can use it to complement and you know use it in your advantage anyhow coming to the next slide what are the main objectives and the purpose of importance of such trainings now <coughs> because i am imparting many trainings on the subject matter be it on the youtube or uh, as i said i'm also conducting uh, lots of uh, masters sts ship handling and hydrodynamics operation of course on the virtual platform so <coughs> the importance of this with relevance to the practical knowledge of seamanship trust me it takes a toll if we are not well versed with it as well as well as we do not have much uh, you know uh, we are not aware of as far as the situational awareness is concerned and or in cognizance with that after being involved in <coughs> carrying out various incident investigations uh, uh involving uh, collisions ramming and roundings that is crg and that's what i said in uh, you know few minutes back that once i did so many in in uh, incident investigation that's what it occurred to me that where are we lacking what actually is happening around the world from the perspective of a mariner uh, you know as far as exercising the due diligence so <coughs> highlighting the omni omni presence of human behavioral pattern and the aspects of the human error have made the mantra of exercising prudence towards the safety of navigations and due diligence completely redundant <coughs> now that's what i'm saying though it's a bit strong statement but that's what is happening because you know in english as it is said uh, spare the rod spoil the child and that's what it is that's what matters for the more why the all these things are happening why the you know uh, the 
the human intelligence or the safety of navigations as per uh, navig navigation as far as uh, you know exercising prudence towards the safety of navigation is concerned has become completely redundant it's due to over reliance upon the choice of electronic navigational aids <coughs> yes of course we do a lot of simulator courses they are video games yes but if you have the knowledge during the simulation that why you're doing what you're doing and how you're doing and if you are aware of it those video games will help you otherwise on the egg disc you're playing a video game without having even iota of knowledge what you are supposed to do as far as practical knowledge is concerned <coughs> over reliance upon the electronic aids to navigation by virtue of which not only we bec we became uh embel uh, uh to the aspects of situational awareness but relentlessly lost the control over a simple situation so when i say we became imbecile of the aspects of situational awareness and relentlessly lost control over a simple situation we have i've come across few incident investigations based upon maib reports when uh, there is a head on situation the vessels are in sight of each other beautiful good visibility and uh, maybe the duty officers it happened it was a, a you know a comedy of error that uh two vessels were on head on situation and both the duty officer knew each other that is third mate or second mate whomsoever it was and they were talking to each other you know happily over vhf uh, channel 69 or 72 ultimately what happened they did not take any action and they collided so the thing is that how can we explain this kind of a callous nature of the duty officer being complacent the above not only puts an extra ounce to a professional capability into a sign of interrogation but also leads towards a catastrophic loss of lives as well as financial losses to the owners operators charters and mind you in return eventually also affects our livelihood directly or indirectly as far as our employment prospects are concerned now today we we'll sail or we live in a multinational culture i had been sailing in past with many multinational culture we are not uh, you know uh, nas or nationality centric we are basically looking at the competency level so if one particular nationality i will not name it i am not prejudiced about it x nationality and if their people or that x nationality people have been hired on many a ships because when you talk about the 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 analysis and you know when uh, the so many you know uh, autonomous companies they carry out the root cause analysis somewhere down the line the nationality logo also comes you cannot ignore it and when all those uh, you know uh, let's say uh, genius people when they home on to one particular nationality they say okay this is the statistical data that in year so and so that when the vessels were manned by x nationality on you know y a uh, number of ships z number of accidents took place so what happens it alarmingly you know raises an eyebrow from the owners and charters perspective and they try to defer employing that sort of nationality and at end of the day what it ha what happens it hits us below a belt and of course your employment prospects do get jeopardized 
the issues related to the vessel's maneuverability and ship handling are among the most frequent causes of accidents at sea with analysis of the present and past studies which shows that the crg that is the collision ramming and grounding casualties account for about 53% of all the accidents leading to ship loss so the crg casualties which have been so far that's what i said when our geniuses they start try to you know corroborate all the data and uh, try to find out uh, after the root cause analysis they also home on to that uh, the crg collision ramming and grounding how much losses and damages it has accrued besides loss of lives to the owners charters and as far as the commercial and financial losses are concerned in turn 70 to 80 percent of the crg casualties are attributable to human and organizational errors that is hoe that is human and organizational errors a fact that indicates that these kind of errors warrant a special attention now there have been so many you know whenever a vessel goes to a port uh depending upon her uh, you know a port of rotation or the when was the last psc inspection was carried out and or when the last wetting inspection was carried out under the ocm of ocimf or cdi what do they evaluate they evaluate basically the high risk observations they try to look for high risk observations as far as the vessel owner operator cargo nationalities and the level of competence of the officers is concerned why why these inspections have by and large become much more stringent and strict is because of this particular reason what i've been talking about in this uh, one of this my lecture or in past i've talked about perhaps you may think that i'm trying to you know jump the gun but that is not the case ladies and gentlemen this is one of the most important aspect which we cannot ignore other thing which occurs to my mind as i'm trying to i'm broadcasting this lecture many of the youngsters they want to get the promotion okay you have a qualified license everything with your respect fine but ask yourself are you ready are you prepared to bell the cat as far as your next promotion is concerned but no everybody wants to you know rise just with a blink of an eye within no time and that's where when we take shortcuts well lot of things happen i will not go into that now so also it also depends upon when i talk about the hoe that is the human and organization error that is if like many a companies have been rated much below with respect to other companies why because of their safety culture now safety is not something what we talk about now cutting a satire on the senior note how do we define define safety when i ask many many a people okay lot of people had talked about lot of things but cutting a satire safety shall not be construed as having a cup of tea safe, safely when i say safety shall not be construed of having a cup of tea safely like how i'm having my coffee to have a cup of tea safely that is wrong safety has to be implemented it has to be monitored and that's where the ism solas mapol all the mandatory conventions they talk about it an incident below 
the remaining of 80 percent is attributed to such operations factors such as CRG casualty what I talked about safety culture organization human performance and the system now the safety culture of a company organization makes lots of impact be it selecting the officers as far as the filtration is concerned and implementing all those procedures and all those uh, you know ways in order to plug the gaps and that is where the organization is by and far supreme and utmost important as far as the companies are concerned so this also is a lesson for the companies to shake them up to gear them up or to ask them to pull up their socks an organization <coughs> which is complementing each other and of course human performance when we talk about human performance lots of factors are there uh, your the, the culture of the officer from where he's coming how does he perceive the safety and also his perspective from the safety point of view and also the level of competence remember when we qualify our coc the certificate of competence trust me with due respect no without prejudice it's basically it it's basically a bare minimum requirement what we have qualified because there is a there is a lot of difference between the theoretical part what we do or we study for examinations and practicality it has no match come what may many institutes have been mushrooming i'm from india but have failed to basically educate their wards their pupils their their students why because many a times the instructors who had been doing all the job had never weathered the sea and that's where it is what you sow is what you reap this is what is life all about <coughs> last but not the least that is the safety culture organization human performance and the kind of system what you're incorporating into it when i talk about the system it goes into the training institutional aspects as well and i would urge many an institute through this media or through this modem that instead of having you know a uh, hypothetical knowledge knowledge with respect to the certificate of competency it would be a better or a good thing to do was to is to besides the bare minimum requirements as per stcw convention for the qualification of the seafarer he or she shall also be you know uh, evaluated as far as the practical knowledge of the seamanship is concerned otherwise it becomes all a bookish knowledge now what are the main factors which the vessel's maneuverability ship ship handling uh, what are the main factors with the vessel's maneuverability ship handling and the and with respect to hydrodynamics which affect the vessel as far as the ship handling is concerned i have jotted down all these points and i will take them in a lot in a cohesive manner in my follow up lectures so please do keep an eye because this will also help especially second mates mates and masters for their oral and especially for masters for their ship handling i'm not asking you or uh, you know i'm not going to uh, go out of my way to ask you to subscribe so far like in last two years i've got i think barely 100 800 odd subscribers but 
somewhere down the line whatever i am imparting is based on the practical knowledge which some you many of you who have been through the uh, this kind of modus operandi they may perhaps know and appreciate it so the first thing is the resistance of the hull through the water that is bow and stern waves why bow waves are positive stern waves are negative i'll talk about it in the follow up lectures this will be a longer series the water pressure exerted upon the ship's hull which is in cognizance with the bernoulli's theorem i will explain it all these things what i've talked about i'll come up in the follow up lecture and nothing will be missed out when i started my initial lecture on the same youtube channel marine quest solution uh lecture number 1 i did talk about it but today i'm coming out with little bit you know upgraded so software where i can draw and explain you in a much better manner water pressure exerted upon uh, exerted upon the ship's hull that is of course the banal is theorem what i talked about hull shapes and design that is block coefficient vessel draft in relation to available depth of water change in density that is change of trim because when there is a change in density when the vessel goes from higher to lower density or lower to higher density uh, there will be a change of trim and what all things which affect and how does it affect all those we'll talk about which is part of the stability which will also help uh, many mates masters as well internal distribution of weights which defines the cog and cob respectively that is the center of gravity and the center of buoyancy respectively as i said earlier i'll talk about all these things in details in my upcoming lectures vessel trim list and heel and the pivot point or pivot axis what are the importance we'll talk about it next prevailing weather conditions that is sea and swell vessels windage area now this has not been covered in many a places with respect to ship handling i will cover up that vessels displacement underwater volume of displacement that is uh, how does it affect the ship's maneuverability and ship handling vessels main engine and steering capabilities vessel propulsion whether she is left hand screw or right right hand screw squat effect that is calculation of ukc this i will talk about in a separate lecture explaining all the aspects of the ukc calculations then banking and cushioning effect all this will be Uh, explain in a in a kind of a you know a combination a com combined lecture with respect to ukc that is banking and cushioning effect as well so i'll give you a small example that when an overtaking takes place in a narrow channel now this is all going to reflect upon what i've talked about this is just an example for you to understand what i have explained in a nutshell over here if you guys have any doubt please do ask me on my youtube channel or call me up uh i have so far two whatsapp groups i'm thinking to open a third one also you like you can write down my mobile number on the whatsapp it's plus 91 Seven eight three eight two eight five one nine six. I repeat, plus nine one seven eight three eight two eight five one nine six. So the hydrodynamical interaction between two VLCCs. Now here I've taken two VLCCs hydrodynamical interaction. How does it take place, and what all are the factors? This is one VLCC. This is second VLCC. Let's see what's written here. SP. 12 and st12 are the transverse and the longitudinal distances between two vessels also vw and v means the wind velocity and wind direction so sp12 this is the one and st12 uh, uh, sorry st12 is this one and sp12 if you see this one sp12 is this one and st12 is this one 
So this is the transverse distance that is SP12 and ST12 is the transverse distance from the approximate center of the other VLCC that is they are in the overtaking situation like this. VW that is VW this is the one and V means the wind velocity and wind direction and the speed of the overtaking vessel VLCC is 12 knots and the other VLCC VLCC number 1 is 10 knots therefore VLCC number 2 is making 12 knots and VLCC number 1 is making 10 knots in a narrow channel fairway. Now hydrodynamically let's see what happens. I've explained in a small nutshell. I will furthermore explain it diagrammatically to all my viewers. Now the particulars for before we go to, uh, to the effect. Table number 1 that is the VLCC number 1 is 320 meters that is the LOA and beam is 58 meters and the draft is 19.3 meters and the block coefficient is 0 0.8018 that is the VLCC number one this is the one VLC, uh, VLCC number two LOA 320 meters beam same and draft same block coefficient 0 0.8018 this is an example which has been taken and how does the hydrodynam uh, hydrodynamical forces they work upon the vessel? That's what it is. That is the point to ponder. The hydrodynamic interaction between two large vessels can't be neglected when two large vessels are close to each other in restricted waters such as in harbor or narrow channel. You guys have a look at it. Let's see what all questions uh, you may come up with, I will 100% resolve all the queries because ship handling, hydrodynamics, STS is my passion. And when your, you know, your, your, your passion becomes your profession, that's the best match. I'm trying to still persevere. I'm trying to persevere and work upon it. Of course, none of us is perfect. Now, coming to the recourse of that is when the spacing between two vessel is less than 0 0.4 times the length of length the hydrodynamic interaction interaction dra dramatically increases what it is saying that i'll read this line again when the spacing between two vessel is less than 0 0.4 times the uh, the uh, times of the ship's length that is the hydrodynamic interaction dramatically increases that is in this case, both the vessels are 320 meters long. But if you are overtaking a bigger vessel from a smaller vessel, you must always take the bigger vessel LOA. So 0 0.4 into 320, 4 3s are 12, 4 2s are 8. So 120, 130 meters when you are in that sort of range, the hydrodynamical, in, uh, you know, uh, effect enhances upon the vessel that's what it is talking about when the spacing between the, the when we talk about the spacing this is sp12 this this one the sp12 what we talked about the spacing if it is 0.4 what happens so when the sp12 is 0 0.4 times the hydrodynamical interaction increases dramatically upon the vessels when the spacing between two vessels is more than 0 0.6 times <coughs> of the ship's length, basically the bigger ship's length, in this case both the VLCCs are 320 meters, so it's same. When the spacing between two vessels is more than 0 0.6 times of the ship's length, hydrodynamic interaction, interaction effect uh, reversely decreases. So when you have 0 0.6 times the length of the bigger vessel, that is, I'll go back to this figure again, this SP12, if the separation is 0 0.6 times the length of this ship, the effect reduces, basically reverse effect takes place. Point number three, also it can be inferred from the calculation result when the spacing between two vessels is more than 
one decimal zero times of the ship's length, the hydrodynamic interaction effect almost diminishes. Now this also impacts and reflects upon the rule number 30. That is, every vessel shall at all time, uh, when uh, in an overtaking with, uh, situation, when you're coming up from more than 22.5 degrees above the beam, a vessel overtaking another vessel shall keep out of the vessel being overtaken until such time she is finally passed and clear. Any subsequent alteration of bearing or course shall not relieve an overtaking vessel until such time the vessel being overtaken is finally passed and clear. This was a little bit about the rule number 13. But when you are overtaking a vessel, especially a bigger vessel, in this case both the VLCCs are of same size, make sure that you are at least more than one ship's length away from the bigger vessel in order to reduce or negate the hydrodynamical impact as far as the underwater volume of displacement of the bigger ship is concerned. Finally, last but not the least, I have written here why bow waves are positive, sterns are negative, why ebb tide is stronger and its effects and what is the venturi effect. All this I will be broadcasting in a sequential manner and I would need all of you to give me the feedback and if you think my channel is worth watching do like and subscribe otherwise I leave it to you thank you ladies and gentlemen good day all the best take care